I'll just get started because um, I'll have to be at a clinic right after this, so I don't want to wait too long. But a large group so far. Um, so today we'll be talking about afocal systems and telescopes. Um, there's a couple. Hey, what's going on? Chris? Um, so it's optics is obviously one of the books, and there will be four lectures this year. Um, talking about optics, this is this one would probably normally come second. Um, I'll be doing prisms and lenses in November, but that lecture is not quite ready, so I'll do this one again, and then we'll do that lenses and prisms next time. And then Dr. Meyer will talk about contact lenses and refraction. So today, what we'll talk about is when and why we use telescopes in clinic, um, the different types of telescopes. We'll spend a lot of time um, talking about Keplerian or astronomical versus Galilean telescopes. And that's kind of a big difference to know for um, OCAPs. There's really only a couple formulas that we'll be using, um, but by the end, hopefully you'll be able to use them. I got some paper and pens up here. So we got some practice problems at the end that I'll have you work on. Uh, a little bit about field of view. Vergence amplification that happens when you try to use a telescope to look at an object up close that's not at optical infinity. And then a little bit about near telescopes. So why do we use telescopes? Um, I think typically we think of a telescope being used for stargazing, pirates looking at other ships they're going to overtake, things like that. Um, clinically, they're, they're used in, in low vision. Um, for a number of reasons, um, you know, people that we see who have severe macular degeneration or whatever the case may be where their acuity is not very good can use a telescope to um, ha increase the size of the letters that they're trying to look at, whether that's at a street sign, a menu, um, buildings, things like that. They also use them in the classroom. Um, and so, like at Ohio State, we had a low vision clinic and we fit a lot of telescopes or people who use to sit in class and just peer at the lecture, things like that. So they're also used um, for intermediate or near distances. One example would just be our slit lamp that we use. You know, we can just flip that switch to go to between 1 and 1.6x. Some, um, some slit lamps go up to 40x, you know, have, have a lot of magnification. Um, but that's just changing the optics, changing the lenses around and using prisms and things like that um, to give, give us magnification to look up close. And um, sometimes they're used for reading. Um, hand, handheld magnifiers, things like that are, are used in low vision clinic. Um, the thing with those handheld magnifiers is the patients really have to hold the object that they're looking at pretty much right up close to their face in order to be able to use them. Um, but they can make a big difference for people. And lots of them have different backlight settings, things like that. Oops. There we go. So handheld telescopes are usually binoculars. Um, there's also a thing called spectacle-mounted telescopes. And I'll show some pictures of that. I talked about that a little bit last year. Nobody had really heard too much about bioptics. Did, have you heard about them at all, Ryan? So in optometry, I think we use them a little bit more. Um, Bioptics are basically they're spectacle mounted telescopes, so they're a little telescope mounted inside a, a pair of glasses. And it basically allows somebody who doesn't meet the normal vision requirements for driving to still be able to drive um, legally. So kind of a little bit scary, but it works. So, um, And then once again, we'll talk about the different kinds of telescopes. So would any of you just up right off the bat be able to identify whether or not these telescopes are astronomical versus Galilean. We did this a little bit last year. I'm not sure if any of you were here remember that. Um, so by the end, you should be able to identify these. These, these are what, what were typically used in, um, in low vision clinic. But, but based on what we see here, the equations that we use will also help us to figure out what these are. So how do telescopes work? Um, so they're afocal systems, and what afocal means is that you have parallel rays coming in, 
and parallel rays coming out, which means that there's basically a net of zero power in the system, which is kind of cool. But you do get magnification. So while the power may be zero, the magnification is going to be a value. It could be less than one, which would be minification, um, which is like if you turn a pair of binoculars backwards and try to look, you see things are tiny in there. Um, or magnification, where things look bigger. And there's always at least two elements that make up a telescope, the objective lens and the ocular, or the eyepiece. So the objective lens is the lens that's further from the eye, as you can see from this lovely drawing here. Um, and it's always a plus-powered lens or a converging element. So, and it usually, well, it always also has a lower power than the eyepiece lens. So that's one way you can figure out if you're given an equation and they say, you know, you have like a plus 5 lens and a plus 20 lens. You know that the, the higher number is going to be your eyepiece, the lower power is going to be your objective. So the ocular is the one that's closer to the eye. And this one can be positive or negative, whereas the objective lens is always positive. And depending on which, um, if it's a plus lens or a minus lens, that'll tell you what kind of telescope it is. Um, its position, this is kind of important, so its position, so the image formed by the objective lens is at the primary focal point of the ocular. And depending on which type of lens it is, positive or negative, it'll either be in front of that eyepiece lens or behind the eyepiece lens and it has a higher power. So an astronomical telescope is um, going to be two plus lenses. So where the focal points meet is going to be in between the two lenses. And here's just showing that parallel rays coming in um, changes the angular magnification. That's why the objects appear bigger looking through the telescope. Um, in this case, so with an astronomical telescope, when you're using two plus lenses, based on the, the equation that we use for telescopes <clears throat> for magnification, the image is going to be inverted. So if you look through one of these um, at an object, at a tree, or whatever, it's going to be upside down. Now these astronomical telescopes are the ones that we typically use. They're typically higher power, so usually we're looking at stars, galaxies far away, so it doesn't matter if it's upside down, we don't care. Um, but if you give one of these to a low vision patient, it does matter if the image is upside down. And so um, we'll talk about what, what things they can do to make it so those images are upright. So like I talked about inverted images, so we use prisms or mirrors basically is what we use to um, fix that image so that it is upright. Um, and you know, you kind of hear Keplerian and astronomical used interchangeably. And kind of the, the way you tell the difference, any Keplerian with re-inverting optics is a terrestrial, because you that would be something used more on land, in binoculars, or um, in a low vision clinic. Without re-inverting optics, is called astronomical, because you're typically looking at things very, very far away. And here's just an example of what those re-inverting optics would be. Light is entering here, it enters a mirrored system, travels through the objective lens, bounces around through a couple more mirrors here, um, and then through the ocular eyepiece lens, so that it would be upright. So these ones, you know, if you think back to that first picture, the way you kind of remember the astronomicals is they're long and strong. So they're longer because with the two plus lenses, the focal point is in between the two lenses, so they tend to be longer. But if they're re-inverting, then often they have a mirrored system, and so they're usually not straight as well. Another way you can tell them apart is the astronomicals are usually the ones that are greater than 4x. So anything less than 4x is probably going to be a Galilean telescope. Anything greater than that is probably going to be astronomical. And the reason is that it just has to do with the field of view that, that you're limited by. Um, and they're always, the magnification, since it is inverted, is given as a negative number. And we talked a little bit about this. So if, 
don't don't confuse when you're on on boards or wherever the case may be. If the magnification is less than one, that doesn't make it an astronomical. That just means it's minification, or that they've turned their telescope backwards. Um, it's just if it's a negative number, that means it's astronomical. So this is <clears throat> the bioptics that I was talking about. Um, so they're they're basically mounted on on a pair of glasses. This is a astronomical system where the the light enters this objective lens and then they would actually be looking through their left eye here. They're pretty pricey, but if it gives them the ability to drive around town, um, whereas before they, without this, they wouldn't be able to drive period because their visual acuity is not high enough and it's worth it to them to pay the big bucks for those. So this is a different type. Um, this is more like spectacle mounted binoculars. Um, I used to be able to say this looked like my brother Jeff, but now he's got the massive beard, so I don't know if I could quite say that. But, um, so now we'll talk about Galilean telescopes, so that was astronomical for the first part. With Galilean, you have a plus objective lens and a minus ocular lens. So since the focal points basically meet up behind the ocular lens, these ones tend to be shorter than the astronomicals. Um, but the way that the, the parallel rays of light enter and leave the system, with these telescopes, the image is automatically upright. So you don't need inverting object or in, inverting um, lenses inside, inside the system. So this is just a, like the simplest type of telescope you could make. And you can do this in clinic. You could just get a plus lens and a minus lens. Um, in this case, this is called the Max TV. Um, people use it to watch TV. It's, it's a pretty low power. It's just 2x, but it gives them a little bit of magnification to use. And these are some Galilean um, bioptic telescopes up to 4x. They usually just be one lens on, on one side. And another area these are used would be in surgical loops, um, which I guess we're usually just looking through the eyepieces in there at the surgical clinic, but like a dentist, things like that, they would they would more use these surgical loops. So those ones are, since they don't have re-inverting optics in them, those are going to be Galilean telescopes. And there's just another example. These ones are just tiny, 2 to 4 x. Okay. So we're back to our, our little tray of different types of telescopes. So I do have the magnification for all these, so I'll throw those up there right here. Does anybody want to give a guess of what all these are, which kind of telescopes? Anybody? Just based on ours, go for it, Chris. So I think the front four, the 2.5x to the 8x, those all seem like the uh, astronomical because they look like they're long. Okay. So these three Galilean, yeah. these four astronomical. Okay, so good on some of those. Um, so we'll, so like first of all, like having the magnification is key because like one of the big keys is like if it's greater than four x, you know for sure it's going to be astronomical. Um, so we can kind of eliminate these three as being astronomical. This one we're not too sure of because it could be either one. It's it's right at four. Another thing with these ones is um, you can't really tell from the picture, but the, pa uh, or the person's actually looking through these optics down here, and then it goes through a mirrored system, and then they're, they're looking out there. So that one's a little bit bent, but exactly right. These ones are longer, straighter, so these ones look more like um, astronomical telescopes. But yeah, so astronomical, Galilean, 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 astronomical. This one's probably an astronomical, but just because of the, the tiny objective lens. But um, yeah, so just looking at the tray, I think I probably would have done almost as good if you have the magnifications, that makes a big difference. So to help you distinguish what they are. So just remember for, for OCAPs, if you're just going solely on magnification and they don't give you whether it's a minus or a plus, anything greater than four is astronomical. 
Um, so it's just kind of a summary slide between the two. <clears throat> um, Galilean has a plus objective, a minus ocular. It's pretty much always a straight housing. And usually 4x or less because of the poor field of view if you go above a 4x. Um, they're cheaper to make just because it's just a simple two lens system. Um, the astronomical plus two plus lenses, so they're longer. Um, they can be straight or bent housing, like we saw from that picture. Um, these ones are 4x or above, and but they are they do tend to be more expensive if they have to have the reinverting optics. So now I'll actually get into the equations that you'll need to use and, and remember. So this is just talking about the length of a telescope and Really, if you, if you can figure out the length of a telescope just by having the power of two lenses in the system, you should be able to figure out how long the telescope is. And if you have just the powers and you know um, the, the lesser of the two powers, so the smaller power is going to be your objective lens, then you could plug it into this equation, and which is basically just the inverse of the powers added together, and that will give you the length. Or you can also figure out the length just by knowing um, the length of focus of the two lenses. So this would be the overall length and it's just adding the object length and the ocular length of the, of the focal points. Whereas with this length <coughs> of a Galilean, we see that it's actually going to be short. So let's do an example here. So, yeah, there's pens and paper up here if you want to grab some. Um, but we'll see, we'll, we'll just take a couple minutes on this. So what is the length of a telescope with a 15 diopter objective lens and a negative 37 and a half ocular lens? So I don't, I don't know, do you get a calculator on the test? Or? You probably don't need it Sorry, for this one. Um, So length is just adding the two focal lengths of the lenses. You got it? Okay. Does anybody have the answer? length is just 1 over 15 plus 1 over the minus 37.5. That minus is key there. So basically 6, a little over, 6 and 2 thirds centimeters minus 2 and 2 thirds come to about 4 centimeters long. So this is a big equation that I do not want you to write down. But at the beginning, I talked about how a telescope has basically a net of zero power. There is a change in magnification. But this is the, um, the not simplified power equation here, um, where n is the in index of refraction and t is the length of the telescope, or the length of the system that separates them. But basically, if you plug it all in, it turns out that the power actually is zero. So this just proves that. You know, with a simple telescope like that example that we just did, yeah, we have a, um, there, there will be a magnification to it, but no power. So the second equation, and this one I do want you to write down, is um, the magnification. So in this case, it's, uh, it's basically just the ratio of the fo focal lengths, whereas before we, it was the sum of the focal lengths for the length. This one is the ratio. 
And so if you're just dealing with powers, it's the power of the ocular over the power of the objective. If you're using the lengths, then it would just be the inverse of that. But one key with this magnification is that there is a, a minus built into the equation. Um, and that'll help us when we calculate it to determine if it's a um, capillary or an astronomical or a Galilean telescope. So here's just an example. Um, if we are given a plus two lens and a minus 10 lens, we'd basically just take the inverse. And even though it's a minus 10 lens, just using the equation, we come out with a plus five magnification. So another thing with this magnification, sometimes like I have a hard time figuring out, shoot, is it the ocular or the objective lens that goes on top in this equation? Just remember, like you're almost always looking for magnification. So if you get them inverse, then you're gonna get minification, which would be less than one. If you get them in the correct order, you're gonna get a uh, number greater than one for your magnification. So if, if there's, I mean, you can pretty much just count on it. If there's a number less than one, that's probably not gonna be your answer, even though you could actually get that number if you, if you get these numbers mixed up in the equation. So here's an example um, another one I want you to go ahead and do real quick. So what is the angular magnification of a telescope with a plus 15 objective lens and a minus 37.5 ocular lens? <coughs> ocular over your objective because we have the powers. So yeah, we'll end up at 2.5x. So really it's just two pretty simple equations is what you need to know for this section. But it is important just to remember um, the order that they go in. I mean there's a couple little cheats you can use. You know you're going to get a number greater than one. But um, you also need to remember that in the magnification equation that there is that minus sign so that you don't mix up whether it's an astronomical or a Galilean telescope. So is this one Galilean or astronomical? Anybody? Galilean. Galilean, yeah. It's a plus, so it, it used a plus and a minus lens that tells us it's Galilean, but the magnification is also positive. So it's going to be an upright image. So there are a few few keys. Another one is that it's less than 4x. So that was another one. OK. So how do we figure out what the visual acuity would be um, looking through a telescope? So it's actually better than without the telescope by a factor of the magnification, which is kind of cool. So. Um, so if we have a patient who with severe macular degeneration, they're 2200, but they still want to read their TV guide, you know, we send them to the low vision clinic, which I, I think we have a smaller one here, but um, to get a magnifier. And they want to know, well, how, how strong a magnification do we need in order for them to read what they want to read? So if they're 2200 best corrected, and we give them a 4X, magnifier or 4x telescope, then we would expect that their Q to actually be closer to 2050 looking through the magnet, through looking through the telescope. Um, and going back to the bioptics, um, all they have to do is reach that 2040 level through the telescope that's mounted on their, their bioptics. So they could be 2200 still, best corrected, and you give them like a 5x telescope mounted on their glasses and if they can look through that in the exam room and get the you know better than the 2040 line we'd expect them to get a 2025 about it. if they can get that or maybe 2040 -ish. but if they can get that 2040 line looking through that then they technically qualify and it's going to be limited it'll probably be more like city driving or something like that but they could still end up getting a driver's license 
have a question about that. Yeah. Don't they have to have a certain like field of vision as well? Exactly. So that's still a limiter. If if they don't have peripheral vision to meet the requirements, then they won't get a driver's license either way. But if it's strictly like a macular issue where where they still have good peripheral vision, because most cars coming at you are not that big. I mean, the things that I'm worried about are like a kid where it's a little harder to you know have that good contrast. But they're most mostly using the bioptics to like peer, peek down and see a street sign down the road or um, you know look at the traffic light up ahead real quick. And they're not they're not driving around looking through that bioptic. They're mostly looking through their glasses and then just a quick peek down. And so we kind of test them in that you know like. We'll have them looking just through the glasses, and we'll put that 2040 letter up. It's okay, what is it? So they have to peek down and real quick be able to tell us, and then we switch the letter, and real quick be able to tell us. So we can see if they're like having to hunt around for it or if they can actually get pretty efficient with it. Um, they're not legal here in Utah. There's, there's only a few states. I, Ohio is one of them. We fit a lot of them in Ohio. And there's a couple out west, but Utah does not allow those. Um, so vergence amplification is another um, really important concept to remember. Um, this is one that Dr. Olofsson, which I think you at least met Dr. Olofsson before he retired. Um, another one that he really wanted to make sure we talked about. Um, basically, what, what it means is that if you look through a telescope that's set for viewing something at optical infinity, you know, looking far away, and you try to look at an object up close, your eye has to accommodate a crazy amount in order to see that object clearly. To the point with most, most telescopes it can't do it, especially when we're talking about somebody who's presbyopic because they're the ones that normally need these magnifiers or these telescopes and when they don't have any um, accommodation left anyway. But if you try to look at an object up close, you're actually having to accommodate by the magnification squared times the, the power of the distance. So. Um, so if you're looking at an object, just, just an example, if you're looking at an object that's like a half meter away, normally using the, the lens equation, you would do 1 over 0.5, which would be two diopters. And we'll talk a little bit about the more, the, like I said, the lenses and the prisms in the next lecture. But normally a person looking at an object a half meter away would just have to accommodate two diopters. But if they're looking through a telescope, even if it's just a 2x telescope, it's that two diopters times the magnification squared. So it's two times four. They actually have to accommodate eight diopters looking through that telescope, which a young kid's probably gonna be able to do that, but not certainly not a presbyopic person. So here's an example. I mean, it's just, you can just think about it in your head. It's the magnification squared multiplied by the diopteric power of, of the object you're looking at. So. If an object is 33 centimeters in front of a 2x telescope system, does anybody want to try to guess what they would actually have to accommodate in order to see that object clearly looking through there? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's just 1 over 0.33 is 3 diopters, and then it's 2 squared, so it's 3 times 4. But you can see how that can add up very quickly to where they're just going to have a blur in front of them. So how do we get around that? I mean, if most telescopes are set to see something at a distance, how do we get around the fact that there's this vergence amplification? <clears throat> oh, I guess I have one more example here. So a 3x telescope, even if the object is one meter away, so we're just dealing with one diopter, a 3x telescope, you're still going to be dealing with nine diopters of power. Oh, I guess this is showing, does it matter if it's Galilean or Keplerian? And since it's squared, it doesn't matter which type of telescope you're using, it's still going to end up coming out the same. In this case, if it's a half meter, you're already up to 18 diopters of accommodation there. So like I said, so how do we get around this? Um, um, basically, we can just add a trial lens or add a lens in front of the system that's set for the distance that you need. So that works really well if you know you're always going to be looking at something a half meter away. You can just add that into the telescope system. There are also some of the telescopes I showed you on that tray, you can adjust the distance between the lenses and that can change the focus of where you want to be. 
So they're called a reading cap. Or like I said, you can lengthen it for, for near copies. All right. <coughs> and it's just a note, a slit lamp, you know, we kind of just move it back and forth to bring that object into focus, even though we're moving that telescope. But it does have lenses in there for when you're switching between the different magnifications to bring it into focus. So if you, if you ended up needing to figure out what power of lens cap, it's basically just the viewing distance is one over the f-cap, or vice versa. If you needed to look at 33 centimeters, you want a three diopter. It's just the inverse of the distance, three diopter lens cap. And this is something that, they, that is really important with surgical loops in particular. So they, when you're getting fit for surgical loops, they first you pick the magnification, but then you also pick the distance that your hands are going to be working, you know, if you're a dentist or whatever, so that you can get that into focus. But if they didn't have that reading cap on there, you know, you'd have to be accommodating through that, which would be really difficult. So in this case, 2.5x surgical loops, 33 centimeters. What power of reading cap is required? Yeah, three diopter. So pretty simple, but three diopter reading cap. <coughs> Okay, so now here's, um, we're just getting kind of towards the end of the, of the lecture, but so we know those, those few equations now. Really the lens cap equation, I doubt they're gonna ask about that, but that's just something to practically know about. Um, first, whether it's surgical loops or whatever else you need, you need to have a, a lens in front of it if you're gonna look at an object up close. But now we'll do some examples that are pretty much straight out of your um, OCAT book. C, S, C, is that right? um, and on on what you might need to know for the actual actual exam. So these are some examples that uh, for the equations that we gave you. So first, design two different telescopes with a magnification of four x. At first, that seems like kind of a daunting task, especially when I don't even give you any lenses or anything. But so see if you can design a Galilean telescope and a Keplerian telescope just knowing that the magnification is 4x. And then just kind of think about what sort of lens powers you would need to do that. need a hint, I can give you one, but I think you know. Does anybody have one for Galilean? My word. So you could do like a minus 16 um, eyepiece and then over a four objective. Sure. Yeah. Minus eight over two. Mm hmm. Exactly. Yeah, whatever is going to give you that 4x. So in this case, I think I did a, a three and a 12 to give you that 4x. So for the rest of the equations, so yeah, absolutely. And you can do anything that's going to give you that ratio that's going to come out to 4. Um, for the rest of the questions, I'm going to use this, this lens system. So we'll, we'll say they have a plus 3 lens. And for the Galilean, of course, we're going to need that minus 12 lens. For the astronomical, it would be a plus 10, 12 lens. That'll give you the 4x. In the astronomical, if we use the same plus 3 and plus 12, well, the same 3 and 12 would be a plus 3 and a plus 12. In 
In this case, it would be an inverted instead of a right. Okay, so here's another example of a question that we'll run through and see if we can answer all four of these questions just based on the information given. And technically, just with those two equations, you should be able to, to figure it out. Um, so we'll just run through all these. Um, so see if you can do them all on your own first, and then we'll talk about them afterwards. But construct a telescope given a plus 10 and a plus 5, and then answer those questions. Basically, if you can answer these four questions just off this information, then that's literally all you need to know. For, okay. Great question. So, um, the if you want to magnify it, it's going to be yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the when you're using that equation, the magnification equation. Just remember, if you get a number less than one, you've probably got them in the wrong order. Yeah, I think it would have to, um, unless they, if they told you that the ocular lens was the plus 5 and the objective was a plus 10, I guess typically that objective lens is a lower power, and so you'd have to think in your mind, oh, the, the eyepiece is the lower power in this case, they got the telescope flipped around, so you're going to get magnification. But I think in general, they're going to be looking for what the magnification would be. Okay. It's pretty rare that you would want to magnify something. So. so you got anybody want to answer the first question? It's the length. Any guesses? Yeah, so we add them together. So it's actually about 30 centimeters. So yeah, so 1 over 10 is 10 centimeters. 1 over 5 is 20 centimeters. So it's about 30 centimeters long. So if it will, yeah, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, what is the magnification? Anybody? 2x. 2x, exactly. So is it inverted or upright? And how do we know that? Inverted, right? What do you think, Ryan? Here? Uh -huh. Inverted. So, yes, exactly. Inverted. And Galilean or astronomical? Astronomical. astronomical. Yeah, exactly. Is it, should it be a minus 2x? Um, yes, it should be. This I just realized that was... I just I had to change this last night because I used different numbers and I totally put that as a plus 2, so I will fix that. Um, yeah, so it should be a minus based on the equation. That's why I was a little bit confused. But yeah, it would be inverted. So it's a minus 2x inverted astronomical. 
number wise, I mean, it's in this case you would expect the astronomical to be greater than four, but just for for the purposes of this example, it just works out at some minus two. And Reese is not even here. I was trying to show him that Utah's way better than Alabama, but um, so it, there's there's a few more examples in the BCSC books in, in that section. It's worth it to review those. I think, you know, it's a pretty small section, but there's potentially, you know, like I said, there's potentially four questions that you could be asked. I mean, I don't think they'd ask any more than that. They could ask the, the angular, or the version simplification potentially, but, um, so just those two basic equations and just kind of remembering like some common sense stuff that you're going to be looking for magnification, not minification. Um, and then just knowing the difference, which one's uh, inverted, which one's upright, which one's minus, which one's plus. And you can figure that out pretty easily. Clinically, you know, honestly, you're probably not going to be fitting many people with these telescopes. You may have somebody in, in your clinic doing it or whatever the case may be. But it is important to know that, you know, if you have somebody with severe, severely decreased vision, they're not totally hopeless or helpless, right? There's there's options out there for them, and it's important to know how to kind of design those. So um, any questions about anything from this section? There's nothing too crazy in it. Like I said, I think the one about prisms and lenses is going to be a lot more useful clinically, but um, but these are still things that, that are important to know. So I mean, thank you very much. Thank you.